<laughs> and, and I would just say that there's no answer. It's every every person is different, so the most revolutionary thing to one person wouldn't be to another. Every every exhibit in there could be to a certain person most revolutionary. And I don't know if revolutionary is the right word. Maybe most inspirational, or makes you you know get chills or gasp or emotional. Yeah, I, I think the fact that there isn't any one big revolution that the, the high speed of uh, progress from the simplest machines out there to what we have today where the computer has almost disappeared, uh, that's probably the most revolutionary thing to see the, the progress with how the solar industry has, uh, has leaped forward. No other industry has done that. The incredible shrinking machine. <laughs> Uh, the thing that struck me the most was the way computers were actually used in order to prepare the exhibit. You know, behind all the, all the quality and design that you see, uh, it, it a huge amount of programming. <laughs> well, um, I took a, a geology course at Caltech when I was an undergraduate, and the geologist told me, Max, well, he told the class, you are living in a geological revolution right now. Well, this whole exhibit and computers themselves are the revolution of uh, science and technology, and the whole thing is revolutionary. I would say these are the most revolutionary things in the, uh, <laughs> in the exhibit, because they're all there, and their friends are there, and their colleagues, and the people who've done amazing things over a couple of generations, so that would be my answer. Any other questions? Yeah, I, I don't know what's appropriate for this program. Thank you. I'm, I'm Todd Bison. Alan G. Smith, um, this year at Hot Chips, asked a panel um, that was talking about technological development in Asia. He said, you know, when are we going to start worrying about the fact that we're bringing people over here and teaching them how to be the best engineers on the planet, the generation following this panel, and they're going home what happens when the United States isn't developing the next generation of what's in that room? What's the start with that one? Well, people ask me, you know, where are you from? And I like to say I'm a citizen of planet Earth. And I don't think we really care if the next generation machine is being built in Idaho or Massachusetts or California that strongly. We just really care that the, the, next, gen, the next generation machine is available for those of us who want it, use it, and apply it to whatever we do. So I don't really um, have an answer. I don't really care. My answer is sort of like, don't care. Yeah, actually, that's, that was my sentiments exactly. Uh, <laughs> Uh, you know, it makes me happy that that this is a worldwide enterprise, and uh, uh, it's not anyone one thing. Uh, you know, it's it, it, it's beautiful work and it advances it advances civilization, and that's what I consider my my life's work is it is a struggle against ignorance and a struggle against some other country. Well said. Yeah, I agree. I don't I don't think we should regionalize this. If they can. If, if some other country can exceed in innovation, God bless them. I, I do think, though, that as far as innovation goes, I think the American culture you know, still stimulates that and still sponsors it and, and allows it. But uh, I think the more the merrier. As well, well if, if, if some other place invents something, then we'll come back and build on top of that. It's not competitive. I gave a lecture on October 15th to um, the undergraduates at Nanjing University. And they came prepared for, with questions. And, and I must say that I, I, the very first question uh, was very interesting. 
why should we study computer science? And, uh, and I think, I, I absolutely agree that, that this, what we're, where we are is global. There is not any way that we can prevent, and what, nor should we uh, prevent, solving the global prob problems of communication between societies of, and all the other problems that we have with planet Earth. So I was, was very thrilled to see this huge room of students that were asking and pondering the same problems that we are. Thirty-five years ago, Gordon Bell started the Computer Museum in Boston because there were a lot of computer companies there. Fifteen years ago, we moved it to Silicon Valley because this is now the center of the world for computers. Gordon Bell told me uh, a while back that maybe in fifteen years we'll move it to Shanghai. We'll follow the innovators. Thank you for the positive. And I probably thank you. So I, I've been thinking back to the museum, uh, to its value of the field, you know, it's in a leaky warehouse and kind of had a squeeze through the table to look at stuff. And I'm just curious, particularly uh, here from you who've been involved with the museum for a while, just your general impressions after having maybe more than once walked through that exhibit the other day about what you're thinking about it now. In the old days that you refer to, it was kind of a private club back then with all the pioneers and the guys admiring all the machines and having fun reminiscing and talking about that and talking about new inventions. But it was kind of a private club. And now this has opened it up to the public so non-technical people can appreciate the breadth and this whole revolution in a meaningful way. I, I suspect young people today that are just born with computers all around them we don't really have the perspective of where it all came from and how, how not so long ago none of it existed at all. So I, I think that's that's what I see this uh, this, this it's about. I've given uh, tours in the old uh, physical storage and I contemplated tours here and. I must say that with the additional stuff here, there's a lot more you can say, a lot more things you can point out that aren't covered in the incredible amount of text and work that's been done. There are a lot of connections between different things. Like, for example, in the logic thing, I can point to a simple demonstration of logic, which is the basis of all the logic in the gray world. And it's very simple, you can understand it. And it's just, you make a few thousand of those, and you can make a pretty one, at least if you're seeing what you Well, let's see, I have a question for uh, the uh, people who are in charge of the exhibits here. Uh, I did not see an Apple II. Now, I'm sure you have an Apple II somewhere. There is. But I missed it seeing it. Well, there are almost a thousand artifacts there. It's easy to miss one. But <laughs> in fact, the Apple II is one of the two icon personal computers in the personal computer alcove. We have, we have dueling icons, Max. We have the Apple II on the left and the IBM PC on the right, and they're still fighting it out. <laughs> Uh, speaking of dueling icons, I was hoping to see uh, Steve and, and Al uh, 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 playing Pond and Space War. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot what the question is. I have a plan. Boss beats everybody. <laughs> I, I, just well, I, I played the uh, one time Ralph Baer, the inventor of television games. He really invented Pong. He, got, he won the patent wars against Atari and whatnot. Um, so I played him, and he's rather old. 
and we're in Sun Valley, and it was his machine. He knew how to put the little upwards and downwards spins on things. Very complicated pong game. So I'd say, hey, what's that over there? And when he looked, I'd serve him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd beat him. <laughs> I was just beaten by one of our guests. <laughs> so, well, what do you think of the exhibit, Steve? What do I think of the exhibit? I think it was well said that basically, um, it's brought it to the, like as Al said, we say, it's brought it to the masses. It's like a real, I've been associated with a number of other museums and the steps you have to take to make something presentable and understandable. It used to be you could come in this building and see an awful lot of incredible equipment. Um, if you knew what it was and where you'd come from, you'd already sort of studied the history and books on your own. Yeah. This